seeing an officer get killed, uh, seeing a family in a car uh, get wasted in a wreck. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it's just not an officer-involved shooting, it's just life in general. Uh, Those types of situations stay with the officers who respond to the call, just like it did for Edward Jensen, who says after his deadly encounter with a robber, he felt lost and empty. All energy to go and try and make sure this never happened to another police officer, that they got treated like crap, got toasted, not allowed to share how they really felt. The idea was met with a lot of resistance in the police department where he worked. And if you once whimpered or said, that really makes me feel bad, they jumped on you. I mean, they just, what a wuss. I wanted to be there after a fact to let them share their emotions, but I didn't know how to do it. That's when he and another cop at the time, Jerry Keller, who later became sheriff in Las Vegas, tried to start a group to help. It took years to get it off the ground, but one day their chief got tired of cops behaving badly. But he was so tired of cops being idiots, cops doing stupid things, uh, cops treating women with disrespect or treating people with disrespect. And he says, Jerry, if you and Eddie think you can make a difference in our cops mentality here. And that's when they were able to officially start the Police Employee Assistance Program. It was a peer group to address an officer's psychological needs and their ability to process trauma. That was back in 1984, well before anybody was talking about PTSD. But just weeks ago this year, the program was lauded by the Department of Justice as one of the top 11 programs that other police departments should model themselves after. And it all started with Rev Ed and Jerry wanting to make sure that cops had the help that they needed. I am powerless over everything but myself. I cannot change anybody but myself, and it starts with me. I got to love myself so I can love other people. 